In this lesson, we'll work on giving our particles a little bit more of a gaseous, sort of cloud-like rendered appearance. Okay, so if you take a look at what we have up to this point, um, basically where we left off from the end of our previous lesson, we have our particles that are in the scene, but now we just need to get these to uh, look a little bit more like sort of a, a cloud-like substance. Now one thing I will do is so that I don't have to continue uh, playing back through this beginning part of my timeline. Again, playing back through your timeline is really, really important when it comes to uh, particles. But I do have a lot of this timeline where I'm just really sort of having to wait for these particles to take effect. So what I will do is just set the beginning part of my timeline to start at about frame 110. So that way as I go back to the beginning of my timeline, I can start playing and instantly see the effect of my particles and not have to wait a great deal of time. So if you take a look at the actual blue color of these particles, these blue particles uh, really don't match anything that we have here in our viewport. So if you take a look at the attribute editor for this, we have this particle cloud. Now this is where the blue color of these particles are coming from. Now as a matter of personal preference, um, I actually don't like to change this particular material because this is the material that will be inherited by all of the new uh, particles that we make. So if I come in and start making heavy, heavy adjustments to this uh, material, um, any new particles that I make will have that same appearance whether I want them to or not. So what I usually like to do and what I would recommend you do as well is to get in the habit anytime you make a new uh, software based cloud or particle, in other words anything that is going to use this software uh, rendering method. Any of these will use this particle cloud. And what I would recommend is to just make yourself a new uh, particle cloud for this uh, set of particles. So let's go ahead and just right click and go to assign new material. And we're going to scroll down and look for this particle cloud. Go ahead and drop that on there. Now we have this particle cloud too and we can come in and make all of our adjustments to this. Now any new uh, particles that I make will inherit that original particle cloud one and I don't have to worry now about any changes that I make here affecting other particles and so on and so forth. Okay, now if we were to come in and render this it should look almost exactly the same as it did before. Okay, same blue appearance which we have here. Now let's start to change this up a little bit. At the moment right now this is sort of flat shaded and that's because really we don't have any lights or anything like that in here. Um, so when it comes to giving these particles a little bit more of this billowy type of effect and not something that's quite so flat as what we have now, we can do that by starting to add more lights into the scene. Um, although that really does start to become uh, fairly complicated and it starts to really slow things down as we start to factor in shadows and things like that. So when it comes to simulating sort of a billowy type appearance, I actually like to do that by uh, sort of faking a few texture tricks and, and getting that billowy appearance in my particles without having to rely on really, really time intensive shadows and things like that. So here's sort of how I like to set that up. Uh, right now, I'll take my color and bring that down to black. So that way we have no coloration whatsoever. And instead of lighting with the color, I will uh, a lot of times approach these particles from the standpoint of lighting my particles with the incandescence. So now I can come in and give these particles some sort of an incandescent color re-render that and they should still appear uh, completely flat. Okay, so now what I can do is instead of relying on just a pure incandescence, uh, if I wanted these particles to actually change a little bit as they start to emit from these uh, hose emitters, I can start to use things like maybe the life incandescence and actually start to get a little bit of color shifting through these particles. Now the important thing to remember with this life incandescence is we have to make sure that our particles have some sort of a lifespan. In other words, we need to make sure that these particles are not set to live forever. Okay, As long as they're set to die at some point, either through constant random range or a lifespan per particle, then the step that we're about to do will work just fine. So for this life incandescence, let's go ahead and click on this, and you can plug in really just about anything you want. In my case, I'm going to use a ramp. Okay, and now if I render this out, what we should see is these particles that now have a little bit different shading based on their age. So if I select that group of particles once again, 
you can see I have my incandescence. Now that has a map plugged into it. And it's the same map that's used by this life incandescence. So if I follow this ramp, you can see what we have here. So as particles are born, they're shaded with this color toward the bottom of our ramp. As those particles start to get older and approach the time of uh, where they're eventually going to be killed, they start to uh, shade themselves more toward the top of this ramp. So let's go ahead and just remove that intermediate color. And I'll try to shade my uh, particles something a little bit unique. So maybe sort of a nice light green in here. Maybe come in here and maybe choose something a little bit darker, sort of a dark green color. There we are, something like that. Let's re-render that. We shouldn't have to re-simulate the particles to see the effect of these uh, color changes. So there we are. We can start to get now something that looks a little bit um, sort of more dynamic, for lack of a better word, where we start to get a little bit of color shifting and things like that. Now, when it comes to uh, controlling the overall appearance of these particles, right now they still look uh, really, really thick. So there's really no um, dissipation or or softening of these particles. They are there one second, and then the next frame they'll just disappear. So similar to what we did with this life incandescence, we can actually create a life transparency. So that way these particles start out nice and opaque when they're born, and as they start to get older and approach the moment of their death, they start to get more and more transparent. And so you start to get a much more subtle sort of fading of the particles instead of this uh, instant pop and disappearance of particles, which is what we're going to get right now. So let's go to our life transparency, and let's do the exact same procedure. We'll click on the checker button. We'll plug in a ramp, and go back and try to grab our particles. There we go. So that way we can actually get back to this connection for our life transparency. Now at the moment, our life transparency is set to this colored ramp. So we're going to get sort of a, a weird appearance in the transparency of our particles. So let's instead switch this to something a little bit more black and white. So let's take this bottom ramp and let's bring this down to black and take this top ramp and we'll bring that up to white. So now what this is saying is at the bottom of the ramp, essentially this is where the particles are going to be born, we have zero transparency. In other words, they're fully opaque. Now as we start to approach uh, more toward the age of their uh, death, as these particles get older and older, they get more and more transparent until by the time they die, they're completely transparent. If we want to, we could actually change the uh, shading on this, so maybe an exponential up or an exponential down. So that way maybe these particles uh, start to fade much more rapidly into sort of this uh, fully transparent state. Now if we come in and take a quick render of that, there we go. You can see now where, again, these particles start off nice and opaque. And as we start to get a little bit further along in their age, they start to now sort of die off. Now, let's work on giving these uh, particles a little bit more of a billowy shape. So let's go back to our particle cloud, too. We can go ahead and call this something like uh, fuel particle material. There we are. Just so that way we can keep this straight. Now let's go to our life in condescence and start to uh, create sort of a little bit of a shading trick for this. Now if we go to this bottom uh, swatch of our ramp, this is where we can start to plug in really any sort of a, a texture. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and go to my, my checker button here, and I'm going to plug in a fractal. Okay, now if I were to render this out, we should see where these uh, particles now start to have more of this fractal color in them. So they start to uh, go to this fractal, and then eventually, because of this ramp, they start to transition back into that original green color. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, try to make this look a little bit more natural. Right now, this is just sort of a random noise pattern. But what we should be able to do is start to make this look a little bit more natural, like sort of a large billowy uh, noise. So uh, start at this fractal, go down to the color balance, and I'll start by trying to give this uh, sort of that same coloration that we had with the particles earlier. So sort of that same little bottom color. Okay, so that way they start off kind of light, but again, really just sort of looks like a random noise pattern. 
So let's see what we can do to fix that. Let's start by going into the uh, Place 2D Texture for this fractal. Let's take the Repeat U and Repeat V. And I'll set this both uh, to something like 0.1, which should give us a really large uh, pattern here. If we save that image for comparison and re-render, you can see what that starts to give us a little bit larger uh, smoke pattern in here. And we'll talk about uh, this process of saving our images in one of our later lessons whenever we start to get into the rendering section. But basically, by saving our images, we now have something where we can compare what we had before to what we have now. And you can start to see where this becomes a really useful tool. And with this really large fractal pattern, this does start to create now a little bit more of this kind of a smoky, billowy appearance to these particles. Now, let's come in and make maybe make a few uh, minor changes here. Let's start to take maybe this level max and bring this down quite a bit. That should start to really soften up the overall appearance of these particles, start to make them uh, look, again, much softer, a little bit uh, more billowy. There we go. That's a little bit better. And let's maybe also start to take this uh, frequency ratio, maybe start to drop that down a little bit. Again, a little bit larger uh, noise pattern in here. And then maybe we can start to bring this bias down a little bit too. The bias is really sort of what you could think of as the contrast. So with this really high bias, we start to get really, really uh, dramatic contrast in here. But as we start to bring this down, we can start to get something that is much, much softer in its appearance. So as we take a look at that, there we go. Now that starts to look a little bit more natural. And sort of this nice uh, billowy appearance. Now if you find after working with this that uh, maybe this seems still a little bit too opaque or a little bit too thick, we can always go back to our particles and again take a look at this fuel particle material and start to make a few adjustments to this as well. So right now we have the density which is uh, very similar to the overall transparency. It just sort of acts as sort of an additional multiplier for this. So if we find that our particles are too thick and maybe it's still a little bit too opaque after applying some transparency correction to it, we can use this density and start to dial that up or down even more. So let's start to drop that density down and see what that looks like. There we go. That's a little bit better. And again, we can continue dropping this down until we find a value that will work for us. You can see as we start to drop that down, now we start to get some really, really soft uh, density compared to what we had before. Okay, so that's a look at how we can start to come in and really control the overall rendered appearance of our particles in Maya.